Good morning and happy Friday to you. This is the final um, session on this topic, at least I think so. <laughs> you know how that goes. Um, so the last one we looked at, well, before I go to the last one, we looked at a communion, love, humility, and the last one is obedience. And to me, this is like the crescendo because you can do all those other things and if you don't obey that, uh, everything is squashed, okay? So I have a little definition that I wrote when I studied what obedience is, obedience to God, that is. And this is it. Obedience to God is the immediate carrying out of commands that develops into the decision to obey even before the command is given. So our obedience to God, if we develop that practice, it comes to a place that we say yes to God even before we know what we're supposed to do. And that is how we're supposed to live our lives. After all, God is the one who made us. He knows everything. He made us with a plan and a purpose. Our lives does not belong to us. If you can wake up yourself by yourself tomorrow morning, then you belong to yourself. But until you can do that, until you can breathe breath into your lungs, your life does not belong to you. You belong to Almighty God who created you. And so we should develop an attitude of obedience. Jesus was obedient. Let us read from... John chapter 6 verse 38 for I have come down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of him who sent me we were created by God not to do our own will but to do the will of the one who created us that is obedience. So therefore, we don't need to know what God is going to ask us to do tomorrow to decide whether or not we're going to obey. We need to develop a mindset of obedience that no matter what God asks us to do, the answer is yes, Lord, yes. Because we trust him and we have the confidence in him that he's not going to ask us to do anything that is wrong or that's detrimental to us. So that is obedience. And that's the obedience that Jesus Christ had. Even when in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, if it is possible, let this cup be passed from me. He agonized over it. He knew what he was about to suffer. And he said, Lord, if you can let this cup be passed from me. But then he said, but not my will, but your will be done. And he made the decision to be sacrificed. That's the place that we need to come to if we are going to have the mindset of Jesus Christ willing to be sacrificed. Now, God is not calling us to be sacrificed or crucified like Jesus was. He did that for us. So I'm thinking if Jesus did that for us and that's the worst, oh, we can do everything else because what may he be calling us to do in terms of obedience? Reading the word, praying, loving one another, helping someone, giving to someone. The whole list of things that God will ask us to do in our lifespan, it is for our good. And it's for the blessing and the betterment of other people. He asked Jesus to be crucified and Jesus did it for us. He's not asking us to be crucified for anyone. We're not worthy enough to be crucified for anyone. So I'm thinking we can make that commitment to God to be obedient to him. So that's it. The mindset of Jesus Christ. Let the mind that was in Christ be also in us. And we can do so, some of the things, commune with God, love people, love God and love people, be humble, do not let pride get in the way, and be obedient. When we practice these things along with everything else, then we will have the mindset of Jesus Christ. And when we have the mindset of Jesus Christ, then we can claim and live the abundant life and the eternal life, which is really a quality life for Jesus Christ. God bless you tremendously. Have a fantastic weekend and happy Easter. Jesus is